Happy Monday, everybody, and happy portal season to all those who celebrate. Curtis <laughs> Wilkerson and Scotty Bordelon of Natty State Sports here with you today for a Monday episode of the Pot at the Palace, an opening day of portal season episode, if you will. Uh, Scotty, it's been pretty fast paced, but maybe not quite as crazy as I thought it would be yeah, uh, going same. in today, but you know, with the floodgates opening and everything like that, but um, at least enough for us to pop in here and, and hit some folks with some updates, a little, little nugget or two, and, uh, you know, kind of take it from there. Yeah. I've been, um, got the verbal commits noties on and I'm kind of looking into guys, you know, whose notifications come through and I'm looking, kind of looking more into them based on the kind of the initial fan reaction to the announcement. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, 99.9% .9 of these guys are new to me. Yeah, um, that's fair. <laughs> from all, all parts of the country, all corners, literally playing ball everywhere. Um, yeah, there's some some interesting names and uh, just trying to get familiar with some guys, um, seeing if any of them maybe fit the profile that, that yeah. Arkansas is looking for. For sure, yeah. And so we got, you know, just a, a little bit of must talk, um, you know, some new guys that have been added to Arkansas's contact list today, uh, some mainstays up from our big board who have come available, and that makes us look smart, which we would definitely appreciate like that. that. <laughs> um, and maybe we'll wrap up by identifying, you know, just some of the top guys who've entered the portal otherwise that uh, that we like. So um, it's like it's four o'clock on Monday, by the way, as we're recording this. And here's the thing. Uh, we, we definitely wanted to, to record something and get it out there for people who may have been at work all day. And they're like, man, what's going on? Give you something to listen to while you're driving home and, and catch up tonight. Uh, you know, like stuff happens tonight. We'll. We'll be on it. Like uh, there'll be something else coming out, but just yeah. uh, to give everybody a time frame, who's listening, you know, of, of when we're uh, when we're recording here, that's probably important uh, because you never know, like when when stuff can pop off. But um, I do know everybody's like waiting for something to happen with Mus, and uh, you know, like whether it's the U of A announcing, you know, an extension or him dipping for another school or or whatever. Uh, social media got into a frenzy last night because Miss Danielle deactivated her Twitter and the U of A wasn't listed on Muss's Instagram bio or whatever was going on. Uh, I get it because like people are antsy about this stuff. Like I understand that. And they're looking you know? for, they're looking for anything. They're looking for anything to grasp onto. And so I tried to play it lighthearted and, you know, just joke about it a little bit. It's just, I want everybody to relax a little bit. Your you tweet know? about the it's, relationship status was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, being facetious, I think it pissed a few people off and that's fine, but I'm just, I'm kidding, man. Like just having a little bit of fun. Um, Cause listen, like I can think of a thousand reasons why Miss Danielle would, would shut down her Twitter. Uh, just given the way everything's gone the last yeah. several months here, 999 of them um, are not because her husband's taking another job. You know, she was on Instagram today, by the way. Yeah. So, but I get it. Like you see that and given the circumstances, it's like, what? what's going on? You know, whatever. Um, as for us, um, you know, like I said, like I totally understand people are starved for some information, but let, let's think about it here for just a second. Like, do we really think that he was just sitting around on selection Sunday and he thought to himself, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go change my Instagram bio. Cause I'm, I'm trying to get out of here, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave all my other socials the same. I'm going to yeah. leave them alone, but I'm going to go change that IG. Like, come on, man. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and for those who yelled at me about, you know, how social media savvy he is, um, that's true. He is social media savvy. Um, so if that's the case, like, do you really believe he would do that? Like, this is the guy who people figured out that he was following guys in the portal right before they committed and as soon as he realized that people caught on to that, he stopped doing it. And he creates smoke screens and diversions and all these. Like, you think he would just, you know, hop on Instagram and be like, I'm just going to remove this. Did I'm, have some more time on his hands on Selection Sunday than in, in past years. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's – I don't think that was on the agenda. Just, you know, right. trying to cause a stir by, you know, removing whatever yeah, from, it's from so a I, bio. That's I wouldn't read too much into that. Strange. I wouldn't read anything into that. Yeah. And, uh, based on some feedback I've received, there is nothing to read into that. So, you know, take it however you will. Um, as a Monday afternoon, again, it's about 4 o'clock, like things from the outside, have, they've cooled on the Louisville front. Um, crickets with the Washington stuff that was buzzing a few days ago. Uh, and, and honestly, I've only had one source that I that I trust who's told me that there were any legs at all to the, to the Oklahoma State thing. And, um, you know, Clearly, all is subject to change, and, and it probably will, but that's just kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. 
with things. Um, it's just pretty on par for this time of the year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like there's a lot of jobs to be filled and, and names that are going to be floating around out there. And there's there's varying levels of truth to all of it. Um, what I will tell you, though, is I've talked to multiple people within the program in the last 24 hours. And uh, a couple of things like some of these guys didn't even know about all the people freaking out on social media <laughs> until I asked them about it. <laughs> Because I was like, damn it, like, I'm not doing this tonight. Like, I was, I'm just going to try to see what's really going on here. Um, and and when I joked on Twitter about Musk might not even, you know, knowing how to change his bio on Instagram, it's because that was relayed to me in in jest. Like, uh, he's obviously a, a social media guy, but he's got he's got staff members who help him run those sure. accounts. Like, he doesn't have time for that stuff, you know? He's got bigger frisch to fry. Um, for what it's worth, like, I've been told – by multiple people that he might not even have an agent to negotiate on his behalf right now uh, because of some stuff going on. So like, and that doesn't mean you're like immune to talking to other schools about other jobs. And, and again, like we've, we've discussed it at length. Like, I mean, something's been going on there, right? Yeah. So uh, it, I'm not, I'm not saying none of those things have happened, but that is a factor there. Um, here's the deal though. It, Eric Musselman and his coaching staff spent, all day Friday and Saturday and Sunday at the basketball facility, working the phones, reviewing film, conducting Zoom visits with uh, with these transfer guys. They're pushing right now with a couple guys to try to make a portal splash immediately, ASAP, like within the next few days. So uh, buckle up for that. I mean, will, will Eric Musselman be the head coach at Arkansas next season? I don't know, man. Like I, I, I'm kind of like everybody else. Like I change my mind given what I what I hear every day. Yeah. Uh, today, if you ask me, I'd say, yeah, I think he's going to be back. Uh, but what I can say for certain at this point is that the people I've talked to within the program, I've received zero indication that they're operating with one foot outside the door. Uh, and if you think they're just kind of like sitting on their hands and waiting for another job, they aren't. Like they're working overtime to rebuild the roster. So um, until some, you know other updates or twists or turns happen like that's that's where our focus is at yeah i think if if you're listening to this you should feel encouraged by that like i think they they just you know finished a season that was wholly underwhelming um first under 500 season since 2009-10 and you know you get back from nashville after playing thursday and like you mentioned friday saturday sunday just working and that's what you know, Eric was at the podium saying that he was going to do. He's never been more motivated before. This is all brand new to him. Like, and you, imagine how that under 500 record is sitting with him. And Not I think great, that, man. I think that's, dude, I think that's the, as of right now, like that's the driving force for, you know, just putting your head down and, and getting into the portal and trying to figure out what this roster is going to look like. Um, seems like it's business as usual. Like it's yeah, yeah, going after guys, contacting a few few people and um yeah i mean kind of business as usual like i said right so you know definitely a, a deal where you, you keep your eye on things you, you monitor things uh, it really all depends honestly on like how the dominoes fall because that's that's a big deal like one job opens um somebody takes it and it opens up something else like you, yeah. you got to pay attention to all that stuff but um you know regardless right now in the moment uh, those dudes are trying to to rebuild a winner. So um, with that being said, Arkansas has been making some new contacts with guys, and that's that's always a good thing to see. Uh, so far, like it to me, it it hasn't been overwhelming with right. Arkansas appearing on every single list of so and so has heard from. And then there's 20 teams on there. Yeah, and it's, it's sometimes in the past it's been like Florida A&M, Quinnipiac, Mount St. Mary's, yeah. and Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Southeast Louisiana. And so you just kind of roll your eyes like, yeah. okay, we get it. Um, and so I know some people are like, well, are they just not, are they just not recruiting because they're getting out here? No, well, I know it's not that because I know some of the guys that they are recruiting. What that tells me right now is like they're not screwing around with guys they know they're not going to take. Like they're not wasting time to make those phone calls. Like yeah. if they don't fit the profile or or they just aren't attractive for whatever reason, like they're not wasting their time with it. In the past, they would make a lot of phone calls just to gauge and just to see. And uh, maybe they're changing their approach a little bit, you know. Um, which hey, I 
I appreciate it. no funny business, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's no funny business. That's the definition. Yeah, um, and so a couple guys they contacted here early in the day. The the first flavor of the day, if you will, is is really an, an enticing one. Uh, Michael Ajayi out of Pepperdine. Um, Scotty, this dude is he's pretty good, man. Yeah, uh, six seven, two hundred twenty pounds. So he's got the size, fits the mold in terms of, of length and positional versatility there. Uh, he led Pepperdine in scoring, averaged nearly a double double, man, like over 17 points, 9.9 rebounds, two assists, 47% from three. Um, battle play, especially sure. at that size, um, 17 double doubles on the year. Like the dude is, and he's a bucket, he's got the length you're looking for. Uh, and the other thing about him is, Muss is obviously full of connections out west. Like he knows guys out there who know this kid, yeah, right? And, and so that's something that caught my attention. Um, I think he's going to be coveted, man. Like Pepperdine didn't have a very good year. And so I know given some of the things that happened this season, that's that's one thing that a lot of people are looking at. Like, well, where are they coming from? Is it winning programs? Um, I get it. I think you need to put a focus on that for sure. Yeah. Uh, but if you can play, you can play. And it, it seems like this there's guy no can. He's already had he, – he's going to be coveted. Like if Arizona, Kansas, Baylor, Gonzaga, like I'm looking at the list of teams that have been on him. So you got a dogfight, but I also think that this is a dude who Arkansas will probably be serious about pursuing. I think so. I'm looking at on threes uh, transfer rankings, which they've updated now, and they got your guy Doug McDaniel, number two overall. Uh, but Michael Ajayi, uh, number five. Yeah, there we go. Number five overall and the number two small forward uh, in, at that position. But yeah, you mentioned the the three point shooting, forty seven percent on seventy seven attempts. So it's not like a it's not a ton, mm -hmm. um, but it's a healthy amount for a four. Yeah, or potentially a small ball five if you want to go really small. Um, Stu gets on the glass like nobody's business. Like yeah, he does. Twelfth in the country in defensive rebound rate. Ooh. Um, yeah, I was about to pull up his shot chart that I've, I've found. Good from the corners. Perfect. Good from the top of the key. Tells me there might be some pit, middle middle pick and pop action going on there. Um, good from the right wing, too. So I think he's he, he's he got a lot of things. He checks a lot of boxes mm -hmm. for you, absolutely. And uh, I love the build that you put in for his, his profile, a thicker Stan Liamude. Stan, Stan was already – Stan was yeah. already – he had a pro body, I yeah, think, he did. when he got here. Uh, he leaned up, but yeah. This is, yeah, it's a good size kid, six seven, two twenty. Um, There's just something... kind of just like a modern, modern four. Yeah, I think that's yeah. just that's that that's him to a T. There were parts to his game that really reminded me of Stan, like where he would just take a couple back down dribbles and then pull up, and it is almost a fadeaway, but not really. Just that little jumper, yeah. and uh, they look like a good shot for him. And you know, like before Stan came to Arkansas, like he made some, you know, he's, he was a decent shooter from three. Uh, but he really got his volume once he got to Arkansas. So kind of reminds me of that. First game in 2024, Ajayi had 14 points, 14 boards against Gonzaga. There you go. There Pretty you go. Good. Second yeah, meeting I, didn't go so great, but he's, he'll always have that first one. Yeah, I like <laughs> this kid. He's a take, and uh, yeah. I think I think you go after him hard. I think he would have had – I mentioned this to you earlier. He had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he would have had eight double-doubles this year if you only counted defensive rebounds. <laughs> And not offensive rebounds, and the kids like got a solid offensive rebound rate too, which you, which you like. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's a he'd be a take for me. Yeah, Absolutely. no doubt about it. So certainly a name to know there. Uh, another guy Arkansas was in contact with today, or it was announced they were in contact with him, uh, is Hampton Ford Kyrie Mullen. Um, interesting here, like another six seven Ford. Uh, Hampton's not very good. He put up nice numbers there, though. 14.8 uh, points per game, 8.4 rebounds per game. Uh, this is one of those guys, though, where Arkansas was the only Power 6 school on his initial list. So, And there were some good mid-majors on there. Like, I saw uh, Murray State and you know some other yeah. schools were on there. Uh, this strikes me as maybe a situation where Arkansas, if they're serious about it, could be looking at him to fill a role. Sure. Because... Um, Reminder: A flashback to yesterday's pod. Like you're gonna need role players. Yeah. And like not not everybody that you bring in can be a you know a superstar, blue chip, whatever. Uh, you got to get guys who can fill out that bench and fill out a role. And uh, looking at him, like he's a Norfolk, Virginia kid. Anyone from that area? Yeah. You just, trust me on this. Like the DMV, Virginia, North Carolina, that region right there. 
if you see Arkansas connected to anybody down there, um, take notice, like raise a brow and keep an eye on it at the very least, because there are some pretty strong Arkansas connections out that way. Um, and, and if you go back and look at some of the rosters over the past few years, you see a lot of flavor from down that way. I mean, you think about the Mitchell twins, DC guys, right? You think about all these Tony's out from over that way, right? Um, L Ellis, Raleigh boy. So, you know, um, just, just something to maybe keep an eye on. For sure. Yeah, I was. Uh, I didn't know what to make of it mm-hmm. at first that they contacted and somebody that I, I really trust told me maybe not to spend too much time looking into him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got like he's he's interesting, like pretty good, like good rebounder, I think. Um, and he's yeah. another solid fouls drawn per forty guy. So he fit like he just fit he fits a few boxes that that Eric typically looks for. Um, uh, like I just mentioned with Michael Ajayi, this kid, I've got a shot chart pulled up, 63% at the rim, healthy amount of attempts around the around the three-point line. Um, he took his most, and he made his most from the top of the key area. So he's another another guy that might be able to step out and stretch the floor if you're, you know, if you do nab him. For sure. And interestingly enough, like, been following this all day, and those are the only two guys so far yeah. uh, that we've heard from. But... What you got to keep in mind is like 250 guys. I think I think the number just went over 250 guys who hit the portal since it opened this morning. Um, and so all these guys hit the portal, their paperwork clears, and then you start hearing about, you know, who's been contacting them or whatever. So it might be a day or two or three before we really start to hear about, you know, some of these guys being contacted and, yeah. you know, how the competition's shaping up and everything like that. But – uh, it's kind of cool, man, because like I said earlier, uh, each day that passes, we have more guys off of our initial big board, which is behind you, uh, who are coming available, which which makes us feel smart. Um, it's exciting. It just them becoming available because that means we did our homework and evaluated these guys the right way. Uh, and then obviously the guys that Arkansas gets in contact with, like Marcus Foster, uh, it's 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 good to see. Like we we like that, you yeah. know. Um, but a couple more today already. A couple big guys, and we know Arkansas needs a full front court. So, uh, big Brandon Garrison out of Oklahoma State. Um, listen, man, like this dude was a starting center as a true freshman in the Big Twelve. Like that's just not easy to do. His numbers won't blow you away. Yeah. Uh, but boy, you get thrown into the fire like that, you get better. Like you, you grow up and become a man yeah. quick. And part he did that, some good part things. Part of those numbers is probably a, just a product of his situation. I would yeah. think, like Oklahoma State's coach is gone for a reason yep like that's just <laughs> yeah. a, that's a kind of a tough spot but yeah he's productive as a as a freshman and on three has him as their number one guy in the portal as of this recording mm-hmm. so the former mcdonald's all-american just i mean I, I wrote some notes down on it we watched his college basketball scouting video my top note was finishes with both hands yeah. like well like i saw a jump hook with both hands which that's that right there is like junior senior year of college type of stuff the way he was composed flipping going over both shoulders with either hand right um i think i said 76 percent at the rim that's really good that's what you a, want as a year one yeah i think i said before when we were talking about him uh that he kind of strikes me as a guy that could be on the jalen williams trajectory of you you learn who he is as a freshman but then he mm-hmm. becomes a household name yeah somewhere as a sophomore um there was so much pop around him when he officially hit today <laughs> yeah. a lot yeah a lot of pop and I, I get it like a block and a half per game 97th percentile uh 85th percent 85th nationally in block rate and then you know still rate over two percent that's it's pretty good for a guy that could that can play the five for you yeah that'll play man um and and this is a guy that that Arkansas has a history with like they recruit him uh he visited Arkansas uh, I think they made his final five or six and you know he's also a regional kid like he's an Oklahoma kid uh, so it's not a crazy thought that there could be some mutual interest there you know on, on the turnaround when he gets in the portal um, I think you said earlier like it sounded like maybe even Oklahoma is a school to to watch for him early makes sense it's where he's from mm-hmm. uh, that'd be cr- man like what would the equivalent of that be for <laughs> Arkansas like somebody goes from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma is that like I don't know who's Arkansas's I, rival yeah I don't know, Bama. Bama. Like that would probably that for would basketball. Be pretty, that would be pretty gross. Yeah, that would that would get people <laughs> bad. Uh, so we'll see. You know what happens there. The interesting thing about him um, is he does have uh, like a like a do not contact on his 
transfer portal listing. And usually what that means is like you already have a school in mind. Uh, did a little bit of digging on that. And I, I've been told that it might be more about him just kind of waiting to see what Oklahoma State does in terms of a hire before sure. he like opens the floodgates for yeah, all that stuff. That makes sense for sure. Uh, and that would be a good thing for Arkansas because I, I think if he has a school in mind right now, it, it's probably not Arkansas. <laughs> the word on the streets today is Doug Gottlieb has expressed interest in that job. But if Doug Gottlieb <laughs> gets the, the job in Stillwater, then Brandon Garrison's, Garrison's out of gone. there. <laughs> He's out of there. Sure. Oh, man. Um, another guy that hit the portal day, big guy that, that I think we both like quite a bit, uh, Mikhail Brown Jones out of UNC Man. Greensboro. Is he on? Is he behind you, or is he on the other side of the board? He is, Curtis. He is the second oh, guy. There He's he is. the yeah. second guy I put on the board when we started this. There he is. Uh, his build is grown man, which I appreciate. It's back. Uh, yeah, big fella, man. 6'8", 220. He's strong as an ox. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a maybe a more trimmed-up version of, of BJ Mack mm -hmm. a little bit, like an undersized, but yeah. he can – he can bang in yeah. the SEC kind of dude. I think I said earlier when we were watching his uh, his scouting video, I said Charles Thomas with a jumper, with a better jumper. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I, I don't know how exactly hey, I feel about that, but it came to that's what came to mind. Um, and I I got on CBB Analytics, and you can you know you go to a player's page and you can look for comps by conference. Mm -hmm. Vin Allen Lubin was the first was the first guy that that popped up there. Well, we definitely like him. I like Ben Allen Lubin. He's actually, if you're, he's right over there. He's occupying that number one spot. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good comp. Um, running through some of his numbers real quick. I'm gonna nerd out for about 20 seconds. 99th percentile in points per 40 minutes. 85th percentile in effective field goal percentage. Uh, 92nd percentile in free throw rate. 5.7 fouls drawn per game. Uh, 99th percentile in second chance points per game. That's why I told. I, that's why I said yesterday, if he pops up in the portal, I was going to melt in the floor. Um, <laughs> yeah. I did that earlier today. Curtis had to had to scoop me up. Yeah, it's a little awkward, but we we pieced you back together. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, this dude's good. I mean, he started his career at VCU. Um, he's a guy who's gotten better and better and better every year, and his stats reflect that. Um, he scored seventeen in a win at Bud Walton, and he did. you know. That fits the mold because the, the one of the main reasons we put him on the board was because it's a guy Arkansas has seen more than once. Um, you know, he's obviously capable of putting up some numbers in that building. So, For sure. uh, but no, he's he's had some awesome stats this year. Um, a guy who might appear to be undersized, like height wise, uh, for the SEC. But he's he is right up Eric Musselman's alley and kind of brings that physicality they need in the paint. Like if you think back to. His Nevada teams were like everybody was six seven, um, and, and switchable and versatile and everything. Like he's the kind of guy who would have played center for him on those Nevada teams. Yeah, absolutely. and he's also you know like he's probably just as big, maybe a little bit a little bit bigger even than Justin Smith was, who played the five for you a lot. Different kind of players, but you know. Um, yeah, I got him officially listed six eight two twenty. So yeah, there you go. So. I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if he's a starter 30 minute per game kind of guy. And maybe he is, but I do think he's like a he is a dude who could be a major asset in the rotation for a really good team, for a tournament team. I believe that for um, sure. And I'd like to see him at Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I'm just I'm in love with this game. Yeah, me too, man. I really am. And I've watched UNCG several times this year. Um, definitely not enough to be like an expert on his game or UNCG or whatever, but we saw him like the, I believe in the eye test. He cooked Arkansas. Mm -hmm. He just, he just did. Uh, wasn't heavy on the glass in that game. Just two rebounds. Yeah. Um, I think overall pretty good defensive rebounder. Um, the, the times I have watched him, I've had a little, I've kind of gone about his motor a few times. Mm-hmm. But that could mean nothing. Like I don't watch that. I don't watch UNCG a lot, so it could just right. been a, you know, a, a here and there instance. But um, yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan. If um, if Arkansas contacts him, I'm gonna melt on the floor again. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if they didn't. Uh, he's a Philly kid, and he'd also be a great fit at a place like Villanova. I'm just gonna throw that out there. That's yeah. You know, like he's he's that kind of guy too. <laughs> so Eric was, Dixon's replacement. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there, but I think I I have a feeling there's going to definitely be uh, some mutual interest there that we'll be able to talk For about. Sure. Um, 
the let's let's try this. How about uh, like the guys who maybe the guys I'm keeping the closest eye on as of Monday afternoon, and it'll probably be entirely different by tomorrow. But mm-hmm. right now, uh, for me, and and then tell me if you would like to add anyone different to this list. Okay. But the guys I'm really watching closely would probably be Mikael Brown Jones, who we just talked about. Marcus Foster and Furman, who we talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, and Jacob Cruz at, at UC Martin, who I, I know you have a little bit of an update or a nugget on. I do, yeah. So I've reached out. I was trying to find <laughs> – I've done this in the past, just reach out to people who have covered a kid who Arkansas is, you know, at least contacted or interested in. Um, and I got in touch with Davis Gregory. He's the lead play-by-play announcer for the Skyhawk Sports Network. This is a quote from him. This was my first full year with the team, but my fifth season covering the program. In my time here, I don't know if I've ever seen someone shoot with more confidence than Jacob. Um, His ability to elevate over defenders is elite, and as the season progressed, his post game was also exceptional. Very crafty finisher around the rim and a solid dribble package. Um, Despite his low assists per game, he was, in my opinion, a team first guy who was never afraid to pass up a good shot for a great shot. Hey. And, I like him more and now. He can crash the glass with some of the best wings in mid-major basketball. So maybe the there's a qualifier there mm-hmm. with mid-major basketball, but six eight with some length. I feel like if you're a player, you'll 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 still a re, rebounders rebound. You know what I mean? Like they can. I feel like they're savvy enough. They they know they know how to go grab boards. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I you know. I just I keep going back to what was indicated to me is that they're you know pushing and trying to make a splash quick uh, to get things started to get the ball rolling a little bit get some momentum which you need to do after you have a, a, a pour into a season like that so it, it makes a lot of sense we talked about it yesterday um, and so I think about like okay who could that be like who could they move quickly with uh, this is I mean. I can't think of a, a better option yeah. <laughs> right there that would make a splash. Like, I think people yeah. would be excited about that. No doubt. Um, and then, again, like Foster from Furman makes sense. Brown Jones just entered today, so we'll see. But, I mean, from a, an evaluation standpoint, knowing what you're going to get, like I think that part of it's already done They know with a guy like him. Like They've seen him two years in a row. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, I, like we talked about Brandon Garrison earlier. I just think it's going to take a while uh, to see what the market looks like for him just because – they're, they've got a pending coaching hire there, and a guy like that um, going to come at a price, man. So you, be, you better get your NIL together. You know, <laughs> that's exactly like that's just right. <laughs> you, Big Twelve centers um, who are just going in their second year of college. That's that comes at a pretty penny. I believe so, I, I believe I saw a story from on three that big men are big men in college basketball are the best equivalent to quarterbacks. Mm, in yeah. college football as far as, you know, what they can garner as far as, you know, NIL is concerned. So everybody wants a big man. Maybe not everybody wants to pay for one, but if you want a really good one, you're going to have to you're gonna have to fork over some money. Yep, no doubt about it. Uh, and then maybe let's talk about a handful of the other, like, top entrants into the portal today. And again, like, you know, these guys, they just got their paperwork submitted. They just popped up in there today, so it might be – tonight or tomorrow, even the next day, before we hear who all has reached out, who all is interested in everything. I assume Arkansas will be in on most, if not all, of these guys. Uh, but but we watched some film on most of them. Got a pretty decent list here. Let's run through them here pretty quick and, and see what we think. Maybe give you guys a, a little bit of a heads up on some dudes. Uh, Toby Akani was like the first one this morning uh, that popped. That was a, a pretty good name. I, I like this kid, uh, a 6'8 wing out of UIC, Illinois, Chicago. So a Missouri Valley kid. Uh, he's from Jersey, so you know like we that. know we know we like that Jersey swag with Caleb Battle, right? Uh, but his his numbers impress me; they intrigue me. So eleven point one points per game, whatever. Uh, Six point eight rebounds per game, not bad. Uh, two blocks and one and a half steals, mm. and he's serviceable from three. But he's one of only six players in the country that average more than two blocks and a steal per game. That's uh, that's pretty good. Like if you're thinking about where Arkansas was defensively last season and, and you see that and then you see six eight yeah and a, and a wing then you I mean you probably think Eric Musselman's kind of guy <laughs> you know <laughs> no doubt um but what did you think about his 
his film that we watched, I mean, I think he was the last guy that we watched. Before he was the last guy here. we watched before we came in here. Um, he looks like a superstar when he gets downhill. Yes. Yeah. The put the ball on the floor a couple of times and pull up. I could probably do without some yep. of them, but the I mean, off the dribble jumpers. Eh. I mean, really, but like, think about that though. Six, eight getting downhill. Mm -hmm. The way that he does is he looked really not, good when he was going normal. to the rim. Not normal. Yeah. Uh, defensively. Yep. I mean, the dude's blocking threes, which yeah, he's 90th, <laughs> 90th in the country in block percentage, according to Ken Palm. Yeah, so that's that's sensational at six, eight. And he's one of those guys, too, I think, who would do really well with the way Arkansas defends ball screens. Uh, where he'd kind of slither over the top and do that shadow deal and yeah, he can recover. Can and test. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Yep. yep. Agree so with that. I think he'd be good from that standpoint. And um He's had some pretty good games against good teams. Like Drake is a is a tournament team, mm -hmm. a ten seed in the NCAA tournament. He had thirty one on them. Uh, he had a double double against Cincy, a Big Twelve team. So you know, I, again, I don't think it's a guy who would be an absolute superstar or whatever. But um, if you're looking for somebody who could potentially fill the role of, you know, a lockdown defender and somebody who can be disruptive on that end of the floor and guard two three positions, yeah, and might can, be your guy. And can give you some offensive pop every now and then, right? You know. Mm -hmm. um, 14 and 10 against Little Rock, if that's our... There we go. <laughs> we, this seems to be a trend. Um, yes. No, Little Rock had a good season. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just... Yeah, he's he's super intriguing to me. 31, I mean, got to the line, eh, not that much. A um, couple games with 10-plus with free throws. But, yeah, he's that, that game, he played 51 minutes in a game Gosh. this season. Three overtime game against Drake, and that's how he ended up with with thirty one. Fifty one minutes. Played fifty one minutes. Holy crap! Fifty one out of what? What is that? I'm not good at math. Curtis, fifty five minutes. That's mm -hmm. uh, that coach trusts him. Somebody. I'll say, yeah. Coach trusts the kid playing fifty one minutes. But yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, he's a good looking kid. Um, Frankie Fiddler, he's definitely on the all name team. No doubt. I mean, come on. No doubt. I saw somebody compared him to. Uh, like a like a poor man's Dalton Connect. Mm -hmm. I think I see more Baylor Shireman in him. Yeah. Um, because I think I don't think he's that explosive of an athlete. It doesn't look like, but boy, he's fun to watch, man. I don't know how much of him you you looked at, but a six seven two hundred and five pounder out of uh, out of Omaha, the college Omaha. Um, so he fits that part of the mold. Over twenty points per game. He shot it fine from three. I mean, he had fifty two makes at thirty five percent. Uh. 253 free throw attempts. That's asinine. At 85%. Yeah. For comparison's sake, Caleb Battle shot 213 free throws this year. So the dude gets to the stripe. He does. And we know how Mus feels about that. He's, if you, aside from that, like if you just watch his game, you watch his film, he's not necessarily the type of guy that they go after. It's the way he plays. He's not super athletic. I don't know how he is on the defensive end of the floor, but Buddy, he's a playmaker offensively, and we know how he feels about high FTA guys. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. Like this is this kid's like. <laughs> I don't say this in a bad way, but he's a free throw merchant. He is, man. <laughs> but that's what that's what Eric wants. Like he he talks all the time about. Uh, I remember after they lost to Arkansas, lost to Duke in the Elite Eight a few years back. Uh, they had like a shot of season low in in free throw attempts and. You know, after they lost to South Carolina the other day, didn't get to the line that much. That getting to the line is part of the game plan. Mm -hmm. Like it, it really is. And he could, uh, he could lend you a hand there. Um, yeah, like over like thirty five percent on over one hundred and thirty attempts this year. That's Arkansas would kill for one one player like that. Yeah, man. Or would have this past year for sure. No doubt. Um, looking through some of his game logs. I mean, there's just – there's so many, like, 20-plus point games in here, it's almost hard to, like, pinpoint pinpoint any in particular. But, uh, yeah, 12 points against Texas Tech, 20 points against TCU. And then it's just, like, it's not great competition in, in conference play. But, hey, yeah. he's, get, he's giving those giving those teams buckets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're not going to play good teams, you might as well torch them, right? <laughs> might so, as well. Oh, uh, we got a 19-point game against Lindenwood. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's taking it to the <laughs> alma mater a little bit. They held him under his average, though. I'm just saying. There you go. So that's a that's a win. 
<laughs> uh, there's a big guy that you turned me on to that that hit the portal today, Amari Williams out Man. of uh, out of Drexel. Yeah, Woo. three times CAA Defensive Player of the Year. Sold. Uh, 6'10", 265. Double Inter- Still interested. <laughs> yeah. um, top 30 in the country in defensive rebound rate, top 70 in offensive rebound rate, uh, top 40 in block rate, 8.5%. And I think I've said this on the, in the past, like there's a Hakeem rate that CBB mm-hmm. Analytics does, block percentage and steal percentage. Um, it is 10.7%. If you put them together, it's 98th percentile. Dang. And the thing that, like if you're looking for a true – defensive shot blocking big like I think this is the guy what will drive it home is 1.27 blocks per foul committed that's wow. crazy yeah it is that isn't it's, it's 99th percentile stat. like right. it's 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 insane like really good shot blockers are probably a little bit to well under one and this kid's like past one and a quarter per personal foul yeah which is wild and he's a like the kid that we just talked about, almost seven fouls drawn per 40 minutes. So he's getting to the free throw line, drawing fouls, and then he's protecting the rim for you. I mean, I just – and I see how, looking at those numbers, how he's – you know, he's just been a mainstay. He's the best best defensive player in the CAA for a while. Do we both agree that Arkansas needs a man of that stature? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you you got to get some – Yeah, got some junk in the trunk. Got to get some beef. Yeah. Meatball, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and he also, like Drexel, I don't know how well they wound up finishing this season. Drexel, but I, I don't think, had a bad season. I distinctly remember him beating Villanova. So They did do that. I don't know they? how he did against Eric Dixon. but that's, Yeah, Drexel went 20-12 and 12 this season. Okay. Uh, let me find this Villanova game. He went for 12-6, two assists, five blocks and a steal. Hey, I mean... Sign me up for that one. Let me look and see what Eric Dixon did in this game just for just for fun. Uh, Eric Dixon had 21. So Okay, well, yeah. Eric Dixon's a tough man. He's match. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good. He's pretty hey, good. Hey, talk about a guy with some junk. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, no, I like him a lot um, and kind of stick with the the region there. Um, one to watch right here maybe if, I, if I'm connecting dots the right way. Uh, Darlinstone Dubar. Out of Hofstra. Gimme. You guys remember Hofstra, don't you? I do. I try not to. Uh, <laughs> 6'8", 211 pounds. Uh, he's a North Carolina kid. So remember what I said earlier about, you know, dudes from that region uh, and some of the connections there. Um, plus Speedy Claxton, which we know the, the mm-hmm. relationship in the past with him and Muss. Uh, this dude is a hooper, man. 17.8 points per game, 6.8 rebounds. He shot 40% from three on more than 70 makes. Ain't nobody from Arkansas did that. Nobody from Arkansas has done that since who? Uh, Isaiah? Did he like? Did he shoot forty percent from three? I, don't know. I know he made more than seventy, but I I don't know. But but he was putting up like felt like twelve to thirteen a game. Yeah, exactly. And so like this dude can really shoot it. If you just like if you didn't know his stats and you just watched him shoot, you'd be like, eh. Yeah, we've actually yeah we were watching his <laughs> tape and then one of the interns saw his shot and was like, man, that's wild. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, it's like you said, he pulls it out of his left pocket. He does. He pulls um, it out of his left pocket and then the opponent pulls it out of the net. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, he uh he can shoot that thing. He's a nice player, man, and he's had some big games. He had twenty four against Duke this year. He had twenty three against St. John's this year. So he's. He's backed it up against some good competition. Um, a guy who started his career at Iowa State, so he was a Big 12 recruit like coming out of high school. Um, and if you're wondering, yes, he did play in that game in North Little Rock. <laughs> he really uh, did. He gave Arkansas 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 steals in that win over the Hogs at Simmons Bank. So, uh, yes, please. And there are some connections there. Uh, go get this dude. Yeah, no joke. I'm, look, I'm, I'm going... I went back to his Ken Palm page and I'm looking up what he shot from three against D1 teams the last two seasons. Uh, 39.5%. Yeah. 40% this year, 38.6% last year. Um, that's on 281 total attempts against D1 competition. Goodness. So you like you can watch his tape and then you can be like, I don't know about it because of the shot, but back to back years, he's making that he's thing. He's had that thing on him for sure. Woo. Um, Okay. Steel percentage is solid, solid on the on the defensive glass too. So, um, yeah, and you know, 
you have firsthand knowledge of of his defensive capabilities. Like he was one of those guys that like because Estrada, Aaron Estrada and Bebe were so good in that game that you I don't know that we really noticed him that much. Um or at least I didn't. Mm. Um he's just I don't know he's he's not I don't think he's still a like a side piece on a team. Yeah. Like I don't th- I think he's grad maybe graduated from that at yeah, this point. Yeah. I think so too. I think he could help a high major for sure. That dude is nice. Um, Damari Monsanto, I want you to hear me out on this one. Okay. okay? Uh, Wake Forest guy. It, if you, if you go look at his numbers, you'll, you'd probably slap me, but <laughs> it, it was a tough year for him, man. Like he, five points per game, he shot 34% from the field. He was hurt most of the year and he's battled injuries throughout his career. Uh, when this dude is right though, he's legit. Like he's a big time player. Uh, maybe a, a buy low kind of guy who could be a real you – know, he could be a death piece or he could be a real difference maker if you hit on him and he's healthy. Um, and I think Arkansas is in a position, if you're doing a full roster rebuild, you're going to have to take some calculated risks like that maybe. Uh, and this might be a guy that I, I would do that with. 6'6", 225, so he's got a good body on the wing. Uh, but two years ago, you know, at Wake in the ACC, he averaged 13.3 points per game. He made 87 87- threes at over 40 percent 87 threes <laughs> at over 40 yeah. percent so another dude who can shoot Two, that thing that that equates to 215 three-point attempts. he's getting them up buddy they're up yeah. and he's also a guy who averages a steal per game for his career still guard a little bit too uh, he's got that size he fits the mold like and if he's healthy he's a he's a dude who can start for sure at a high major so yeah I, I don't know what the market for him is going to look like because of his his past with injuries and everything. Um, I don't know. I have no idea if Arkansas is going to be interested in him or not. But like he's a guy that I saw and I was immediately like, this could be a steal kind of yeah. dude. Yeah, I see that. Um, you know, Ken Palm has in there. You know, you can go to you can look at like basically this screen right here. And it'll send you, it'll show you some like similar players, and it'll get, like it goes back through like their whole database. So you could go back, I guess, even to like the early years of, mm-hmm. of when the data is in there. Uh, similar players for Damari Monsanto, not this past season, but the year that you were talking about, he shot forty percent from three. One of the similar players is Jeremiah Davenport. No way. Yeah, from his uh, from his. I believe it was his next to last season at Cincinnati. Yeah, which was by far his best year. Yeah, yeah. I Jeremiah like that Davenport, a lot. Similar, similar. You player. know how we feel about I mean, Jeremiah similar, Davenport on this show. Six six two twenty five and JD's six six two fifteen. Yeah, I love that. How about that? Get him up, get him up, baby. Two hundred and what? Two hundred fifteen. Gosh, man. Did yeah. Arkansas even shoot two hundred fifteen threes as a team? I only Man, say that halfway facetiously, it but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that season that you were talking about, Monsanto shooting forty percent from three, shot legitimately shot forty percent in conference play. Against, yeah, against so against ACC the ACC team. So mm-hmm. yeah, so good good competition. Yeah, worth a look. Worth yeah. a look, I think for sure. Uh, a couple more guys, and we'll wrap up and get out of here. We're not going to go this long every day, but it's the first day, so there's a lot to talk about. Okay, um, in state kid. That you brought to my attention, Kylan Milton mm-hmm. from UAPB, uh, six four guard, Conway kid, Coach Solo over at UAPB is good people. Um, he's not too shabby, man. Not too shabby of a player. Seventeen points, six and a half rebounds, three assists per game. Um, okay as a shooter, like a, about a make per game at thirty five percent. But uh, to steal uh, my favorite phrase that you have, he is a free throw merchant, <laughs> right? <laughs> Number three free throw rate in America. There we go. That's how he. I mean, that's how he gets to the how he gets his points, man. It's top fifteen in fouls per draw, fouls drawn per forty at seven point one, which is <laughs> that's nuts. His free throw rate is eighty nine percent. So that's like if he's taking ten shots, he's also taking eight point nine free throws. Like that's yeah. how that's how that works, right? And that is that's insane. It really is. And you know, six four, uh, one hundred ninety pounds. He's you know. Apparently he's pretty slippery. He can kind yeah. of get get to his spots and and draw contact. But yeah, he's uh yeah, he's interesting. He had twenty six on Grambling. Um who's in the tournament? That's right. 
20 on Texas Southern, 21 on uh, Jackson State, <laughs> uh, 34 on Missouri. Yes. Got to the free throw line 20 times. Got to get him. Yeah. He's at the top of the board now. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get and him. He put up, put up 20 on UCA too. So Nice. And then 24 on Oklahoma. It just – it. 10 on UConn, 13 on Gonzaga, uh, 24 on Oklahoma. Like, th- this kid has played. Like, you say what you want about UAPB. Mm-hmm. Um, not a good not a good team. Right. But they have to go out and play ridiculous competition. Yep. They just have to. And he's played UConn, Gonzaga, Oklahoma, Minnesota, um, Missouri. Played some, some tough competition, so it wouldn't be – Potentially brand new to him if he, uh, you know, if he lands with a, a bigger program. For sure. And, you know, like it, it, people might be listening and being like, okay, like every guy you talk, every single guy you've talked about, you like, I take him, I take him, I take him. Well, yeah, but like I, we understand they're not going to go get them all. Um, and you got to be patient. It's just the first day. But these are the guys who have kind of stood out to us on the first day. A dude like Milton, um, again, an in state guy. And then if you're looking for, you like, you need some depth. Um, maybe a little pop off the bench. Seems like he might be a guy who could provide that. I'm not, I don't know how it would translate, uh, but yeah. like you mentioned, you know, that like the returns are pretty good ag- mm-hmm. against some of the, the higher level competition there. And he wouldn't be in a situation where he would have to be the guy. Absolutely. And I don't even know if that's the role he's looking for. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but I like the idea of it overall. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe a guy we keep an eye on and see how the market develops for him. And uh, if Arkansas even gets involved, but for yeah, sure. not a not a bad little player there. And I see one, two, three, four games with uh, ten plus defensive rebounds too. So it's oh. at this at six four. That's not too bad. He's climbing on the glass a little. Yeah, he help you out. Yeah, for sure. Um, are we both out on Doug McDaniel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If any, if nobody is, if you guys haven't watched Michigan basketball this year, you didn't miss much. But um, this dude is. Uh, He's a little fellow, and he get he gets the shots up Man. at Michigan, but kind of inefficient. We weren't we weren't necessarily crazy about his game. We were watching him in the Bahamas together, and uh, then he had the weird deal where he was suspended for road games only. He played in home games. We didn't travel on the road because he's I don't know if he's working on academics or what was going on there, but that was kind of weird. Um, and doesn't really he's too small and, and not. Obviously, he's a good player at yeah, the high major 11. level, but he's he's too small for Eric. Yeah, I would um, agree with that. They've they've tried that and it and it hasn't worked. So uh, probably pass on that. But that was the other really big name I think that they hit the portal early today. So okay, well, what we got we got anybody else? I just wanted to mention it. Yeah, because you said we could mention him. We're not. I don't want to talk about him just a ton, but Kobe Sanders, Cal Poly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal Poly. Um, at the time that I wrote my notes, he was a top shooting guard in the portal by on threes, um, ranking six eight two oh five. So he is a slender man. Um, it's, it's a really bad team he's coming from, Curtis. You know that four and twenty eight. Yeah, Arkansas just got a guy <laughs> from a team that went four and twenty eight. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of liked his. Uh, there were some parts of his film that I liked, and but he's just he's uh, it appears to be minimal defense played. Ah, so yeah, that was uh, I think that was a red flag. Yeah, nearly twenty points per game. So he he gets him up there. And again, another deal where I feel I usually feel pretty good about those West Coast guys like mm-hmm. that because it, it just I don't know. Like I just feel like with all the connections, like Musk can really vet those guys yeah. and know yeah. what's up. I would agree with that. So yeah. Uh, but no, he's a nice player. I forgot about him. Oh, one other guy that I had on my list, and I, I just overlooked him. I shouldn't have. Uh, Brandon Johnson, out of East Carolina. Speaking of six eight guards, like do you guys see the theme here? Six seven, six eight, six seven, six eight. Um, why are we doing this? Because we know that's what Muss is gonna do. Been covering Eric <laughs> Musselman for five years. Yeah, like he's gonna get a half dozen guys who fit this mold. So we're base any one of, any of them that we see, we're doing a deep dive on them. We're not gonna we're not gonna pick all of them and talk about them on here, but a lot of them we are because. That's just what they're going to be after. But yeah, Brandon Johnson, uh, East Carolina guy, really good player for him. Made 68 three-pointers this season, averaged almost two steals per game. Um, and he's also a, a Raleigh, North Carolina. So there you go with that region again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I, I would be very surprised if Arkansas wasn't in, and you know involved to some degree with Brandon Johnson. Double-double against Florida. Ooh, really? Mm-hmm. There you go. So he's doing it against the SEC. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, legitimately, that's kind of the, that's probably at least part of your check is like, what's he doing against power conference? Yeah, power conference teams and mm-hmm. um, yeah, against D one competition, thirty six percent from three on over one hundred and seventy attempts. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Well, there you have it. I think we basically picked Arkansas's roster for next year on day one. Yeah, just get those guys and let's be done with it. Yeah, just start getting Call ready to uh, getting ready to see if they can get back to the tournament next year. If they yeah. get all those guys, they probably be I in think this shape. is a turning team. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe we'll build out that lineup uh, on a, on a slow day. All right, we'll, we're just gonna go ahead and start. Who's the odd man out? Who's not getting in the rotation out of this group? Woo, woo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, man. It might be, it might be our in-state guy. Might, might be Milton. Yeah. I don't know. Kobe Sanders might shoot his way out of the rotation. He might. Yeah. It could be him. Well, they'll be battling out for that uh for that eighth man spot there. So yeah. <laughs> um and then for those who are curious, like again, like as of late Monday afternoon, uh no other Razorbacks have entered the portal at this right. time. Uh still pinion uh Denage Harris and um Keon Minifield. Keon Minifield, mm-hmm. thank you. Um, I, there's one in particular that I expect to happen at any minute. And, uh, you know, when it does, we'll, we'll write about it, talk about it, and all those things. Uh, but it's been good. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about some of these guys and, uh, you know, who to keep an eye on here early. That's going to continue to develop. Um, and as it does, we'll be back with you guys to, to give you some more details. And as the intel starts to come in on who they're really targeting and, Visits get lined up and commitments start to pop and all those things. It'll uh, it'll really start to heat up. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, appreciate you guys, man, for for listening in. Uh, the last podcast that we did on Selection Sunday yesterday was by far it's the um, most watched that we've done. Most watched, most listened to. Uh, really appreciate that, man. That that's cool. We we love it that you guys are rocking with us. Uh, we're having a good time with it. We're taking it very seriously, and uh, it's been a blast. So um maybe tomorrow maybe wednesday we'll see how things shake out and how things heat up but when there's things to talk about we'll be back to do it for scotty borderline this has been curtis wilkerson with united states sports and we'll catch you guys very very soon appreciate y'all